You can propagate a peak model from one file to another file in CASA XPS. By a peak model I mean a set of components and a background. So we'll begin by loading a set of files and these files consist of a VAMAS blocks that include a survey spectrum, carbon S, oxygen, nitrogen and chromium. And what we will do is illustrate how to first select a set of VAMAS blocks and then propagate from one carbon S VAMAS block to all the other carbon S VAMAS blocks in these set, this set of files. So if you select a VAMAS block in the right hand side and then use the select menu you can then either select matching VAMAS blocks or select and display matching VAMAS blocks. This means any VAMAS block that has the same element transition field will be selected in the right hand side and then displayed in the scroll list in the left hand side. So having prepared a set of files all now with carbon one s selected and the carbon one s spectrum displayed in the active tile we'll, we will create a peak model for one of these and this involves creating a background using the regions property page and then what we'll do after we've loaded an appropriate element library and the reason for loading this element library is to have access to a different line shape and the line shape is stored within the element library so once we've loaded the element library we'll create a set of, of component peaks that will represent three different chemical states in the carbon and then we have two additional peak shapes which are actually not carbon at all but they're potassium 2p doublet peaks so we will create a peak and then copy it and then paste the same peak again and again and then position the peak using the cursor so they all come up initially saying carbon 1s and when we've positioned the peaks we can then make some adjustments to indicate what we have so the potassium doublet will enter the name in the name fields of these components to indicate what they are and because not all of the data files have potassium in the carbon 1s energy interval what we need to do is set up some constraints that will prevent these potassium peaks that are in this peak model from moving underneath the carbon envelope when we attempt to optimize data that doesn't have any potassium. So we'll set the area constraint and we know this should be in a ratio of 2 to 1 for the doublet and also we'll select the full width half maximum and the position offset based on fitting these data and then we'll limit the range over which the full width half maximum and also the position can move so that when we do the fit to other data these these peaks for the potassium stay very close to where we've positioned them. So now having prepared a peak model the next step is to propagate the peak model. We'll just display a couple of these so that we can see what happens when the propagate occurs and we propagate by right clicking over the tile where the data shows the peak model we want to transfer. And what we did initially was just transfer the peak model. We didn't do a peak fit. And the reason we didn't do a peak fit is that we wanted to first of all assess whether we needed to do any calibration. Turns out we have one that needs charge compensation. And so what we'll do is calibrate the entire data set using a range calibration in order to put roughly position all of the carbon 1s and actually all of the other peaks with an offset determined from the carbon 1s. So the range mean is indicating an, an energy interval over which we'll search for a maximum intensity and we'll assign that maximum intensity an energy of 285. And then if we apply the calibration to all the selected VAMAS blocks, it'll calibrate every VAMAS block with respect to this carbon 1s using the apply range calibration by row. And what this is indicating in this list is that the carbon 1s is the source for determining what the offset ought to be. And it also shows you the 
the other VAMAS blocks that will be calibrated using the calibration from the Carbon 1S. So now, going back to our peak model, having calibrated, we can now right click again and propagate, uh, but we need to first of all make the right selection. We would propagate all of the VAMAS blocks that were selected if we had carried on. So we have returned, we've selected a Carbon 1S and then we are going to just select Carbon 1S in the right hand side. So now the list shows the Carbon 1S and we propagate and now the components are all lining up without too much trouble. So we can now auto fit across the data set. And we end up with data where the carbon mass is fitted using three peaks. And we can then create a report using the browser operations again that gives us the components. And this allows us to copy the table of component areas and percent areas into a spreadsheet program.